All right, I'm an atheist, and I'm going to try to explain why I think my position is valid. You can feel free to disagree. It's America. And hopefully you won't take my opinions personally. As you can see by my uh, cartoon, I'm lighthearted and got a sense of humor about it. And so hopefully, even though you disagree, you can, uh, won't hate my guts. <laughs> so uh, here we go. All right, what is atheism? A lot of people don't even know what atheism is. They uh, have all these misconceptions where communists or we're America haters, or we hate Christians, or we're all uh, bigots, or, or obsessed, or you know, all kinds of stuff. Uh, what is atheism? Atheism is simply a lack of a belief in deities. Uh, you know, like if you don't believe in UFOs, uh, you're a UFOist, or a UFOist. And uh, so, if you don't believe in God, you're an atheist. That's it. Uh, it has nothing, there's nothing else to it. Uh, really simple. Uh, you know, now agnosticism is the belief uh, that we cannot know if God exists or not. And of course, uh, they, uh, the terms are not uh, exclusive. You can be both. If you believe that you can't really know if God exists or not, but personally you don't believe, you're an atheist and an agnostic. People don't realize that you can actually be both. Uh, if you believe in God, but you don't really think you can know that a God exists, you just believe he does, and you'd be an agnostic theist. And uh, so you can actually be both. And so that goes again with the notion that atheists are arrogant and we insist we know there's no God. Well, you can be an atheist agnostic. And of course, a theist is someone that, well, believes in God. And I'm going to try to tell you why I think atheism is a valid position. Try to. All right. Atheism is the default position. And the reason I say that is because whenever, let's see here, you know, positive claims require positive evidence. Faith is not enough or else all religions would be right. Everybody can make claims. I could say the Easter Bunny exists. Well, it doesn't mean he does unless I can back it up. Of course I have, so of course he does. As you can see, I've proven uh, that he does exist uh, with a picture. But, no, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, no, you have to uh, back up your claims for them to be true. Otherwise, we can assume they're not true by default. Uh, <clears throat> that might, uh, that doesn't intend to sound arrogant. It's just the way it is. You make a claim, you back it. If I say there's a teapot floating around Saturn, uh, well, how do I know that? Well, I'd have to show you. I'd have to prove it to you somehow. Otherwise, like I say, you can just make anything up. And the second thing I want to point out is that extraordinary claims uh, require extraordinary evidence, uh, like miracles, for instance. Uh, the reason, like, if I tell you I had cereal for breakfast this morning, yeah, you probably believe me on that. But if I told you I came to college today by flapping my arms like a bird, uh, you might not be inclined to believe me unless I give a demonstration. And so even if you're right, or let's say you really have seen a miracle, maybe you have, but you should understand that I or someone who hadn't seen it uh, has a, you know, it's legitimate for me or someone else to go, no, nah, I don't believe you, uh, unless you prove it. Maybe even if you're right, like let's say I got abducted by a UFO, maybe I have. But of course that sounds crazy, and you're not, you know, you're not obliged to believe me unless I can cough up some evidence. And uh, let's see here, and the fact is, you guys are all atheists, uh, to all gods but one. Well, some of you may be atheists to him too. I don't know if I'm alone in the crowd or not. But uh, essentially, you don't believe in Thor, Zeus, uh, Aphrodite, or even Allah, or anything like that. Uh, some of you do believe in the Christian God. And uh, so I just go one God further. For the same reason that you don't believe in the other God, for the same reason I don't believe in yours. And uh, all right, so now we'll get into a few uh, arguments that believers make uh, and why I don't uh, accept them. Unfortunately, these are going to have to be simplistic because of time constraints, but we'll do what we can. Uh, all right, the first thing that uh, believers like to say is that something cannot come from nothing. Uh, they'll say, yeah, something cannot come from nothing. Something had to get things started, and that something was God. You know, how did this universe get here? Well, God did it. And, of course, our answer to that is, uh, well, so what made God? How did he get here? And, of course, you'll say, well, he was always here, or he doesn't need an explanation. Well, we can simply respond with, so why does the universe need an explanation? Maybe it was always here. Uh, even the Big Bang, I mean, the Big Bang doesn't say nothing exploded. It says that that's as far back as we can trace it, but the universe may have existed in another form before the Big Bang, for all we know. And so, uh, <clears throat> in fact, uh, many atheists, I don't want to assume, because that's the thing, atheists, all it is is you don't believe in God, and so you can find atheists who have different opinions on how we got here, or if we got here, or whatever. 
Uh, but many atheists assume the universe has always existed in one form or another and thus needs no explanation for its existence. And I'm one of those. All right, uh, the next argument is the argument from design. And what this argument says is airplanes do not assemble themselves randomly when tornadoes run through junkyards. Uh, we're complex creatures. How did we get here? Did we just pop in here like this? And, of course, another thing you might say is you've never seen half a wing or half an eye or something along that lines. And, of course, that's a complete misunderstanding of the theory of evolution. Uh, evolution doesn't claim that complex things just popped into existence. Things gradually, I mean, it starts off real small and then just sort of gradually changes with uh, what I believe is, uh, I'm trying to remember how it goes, with natural selection. For instance, let's say you have uh, a bunch of white cats and a uh, black cat and you're, they're running around and it starts snowing. And so it's hard to see the white cat, but that poor old black cat, you can see him running around in the snow. Well, he's going to get eaten by the birds. So, of course, he's not going to reproduce as much as the white cat. Now, if it suddenly, uh, the snow goes away, and the climate changes a little bit, and you've got a more dark ground environment, the white cats are going to be the ones that you can see more obvious. And so, of course, they're going to be the ones eaten by the birds, and the black cats will be reproducing more. And you see actual evidence of this happening with things like, uh, back in the 1800s, there were more of a certain color moth. Uh, and whenever the Industrial Revolution hit England and the trees started becoming blackened with soot, the uh, dark moth actually started becoming more populated and uh, other moths. So evolution says things gradually change, and whenever you have billions of years, things change a whole heck of a lot. That's it. And uh, so uh, the next thing is called the God of the Gaps argument. And that's basically where you say, well, I don't know how X happened, so God did it. And of course, we did this all throughout history. Uh, where does lightning come from? Well, God did it. Well, now we know, uh, well, it's a, uh, you know, we got explanations now with science and cloud rubbing and creating static electricity and whatnot. I've got that cute little comic there to kind of explain. The, uh, you can't just go, hmm, I don't know how this happened. God did it. And unless you can show exactly how he did it and how you know he did it. And so uh, that's another thing. It's called the God of the Gaps. And uh, like I say, you could have the same problem. But you say, well, look how complex we are. Well, God must be infinitely more complex. And so if you're going to say that, you're going to also have to explain how he got here. And the last thing, just sort of a cute thing, I thought, uh, why do men have nipples? Uh, obviously, if God made us straight up, why would he give men nipples? Uh, evolution would explain that. We all, you know, <coughs> females in the womb, and then we sort of grow in, and uh, the males get the right hormones or what have you, but uh, we'll move on here. All right, look at the beauty in the world. That's another one. Uh, look at the beauty in the world. Babies, puppies, music, sexy woman, etc. This proves there's a God. Of course, uh, wait a minute. I can answer that. We'll look at Ebola, cancer, tornadoes, Michael Jackson, uh, etc. And uh, so, of course, you can throw that back. If, if you can say beauty proves God, well, I'd say uh, ugly things disprove God. Of course, you see in that picture there, that's an Ebola virus. Ain't it pretty? Uh, Ebola virus, for those of you who don't know, is a real nasty critter. Uh, the thing is, uh, have you ever seen Outbreaks? Uh, that's what it is. You should check out that movie if you hadn't seen it. And the other thing is, if there's an all-loving, all-powerful God, why does he do horrible, why does he let horrible things happen, like kids getting cancer and enduring child abuse and such? And of course, I know what the answer to this is going to be. Uh, there's two options. Well, uh, sin, but of course, the fact that two people ate an apple 6,000 years ago, presumably, uh, is not justification for God sitting on his rear end if he loves us while a little kid dies of cancer. So I think it's more likely to assume that nature exists and horrible things happen and there is no God because if there was one and he loved us, he wouldn't let little kids die of cancer. He wouldn't stand idly by while kids get beat up and abused or sexually ass assaulted and various other things. And of course, they're innocent kids. What did they do? And uh, so you can't really say, well, they sinned yet. And uh, so we're going to move on to the next piece. And the other one is miracles happen every day. Got a cute little comic. I don't know if that has anything to do with what I'm talking about, but I thought it was funny. Uh, anyway, miracles happen every day. Uh, God saved me from a burglar. God got me hired, saved my life in a wreck, healed me or whatever. And of course, uh, we can go back to the other one. If you believe God got you a job or God uh, you know, protected you from a burglar, well, wait a minute. So why did God protect you? and not that little kid getting abused. Well, obviously, could it might be possible that you just got lucky and the kid didn't, and it has nothing to do with a God or not. 
you know, uh, essentially the claims of miracles are usually anecdotal, which means all you've got is your own word. Uh, yeah, I know so-and-so got healed of cancer, but you don't exactly have any actual evidence. It's just anecdotal evidence. And the other is uh, seeing miracles where none have occurred. For instance, thinking, oh, I had a backache, or I got the flu and I got better, or God healed me. Or here's a hilarious example. My dad is a preacher, and one of his preacher friends was talking to him, and he said, God healed me of diabetes. Now I only have to take insulin once a day. Well, uh, that's not exactly a miracle. If you really got healed of diabetes, of course, you wouldn't be needing insulin at all. So, but he thought it was a miracle and would have told me, see, a miracle happened. I only had to take insulin once a day. Uh, and the other thing, think about this. This is something that just happens all the time on the news. Uh, if an airplane with 100 folk on it crashes and only one survives, they're going to be parroting the miracle. Look, God saved that one person. What about the other 99? Isn't it more likely that that one guy just got lucky? Uh, you know, uh, I think it's kind of arrogant to say, well, God loved that one guy enough to save him, but the heck with the other 99? And uh, so, of course, I, if it's really a miracle, we'd see a plane crash and disintegrate completely, and all 100 of them walk away with no scratch whatsoever. Now, that might be a legitimate miracle. And, of course, uh, atheism and morality. A lot of people, they uh, will say to you, you know, uh, how can you have morality if you're an atheist? You don't got the Bible or the Koran or whatever to follow. And, of course, I'm going to get to that. Uh, you know, uh, you know, we're social animals. Uh, we evolved with things like empathy and a desire to cooperate because if we didn't, frankly, we would have killed ourselves off. Uh, you know, and just like we, I mean, dogs cooperate with each other in packs and monkeys and uh, ants and bees, and so we're no different. And so we're moral to each other, mostly, uh, because we're just such a way evolved. And uh, the second thing to consider is, you know, regarding morality is why are we moral? Are you moral just because you're scared of hell? Or are you moral because uh, you care? i got a couple of things here. I say, think about this. Do you help others because you care or because you feel compelled by commands? Uh, and why don't you murder people? Is it because you're uh, not a murderer? I mean, or are you scared of hell? Do you go around thinking, I wish I could murder, uh, but I'll hold back because I don't want to burn in hell. Or do you just, you're not a crazy person that wants to go around killing folks. And the other thing is, morality either exists, uh, for instance, it's either right to do good to people or it's not. And if it's only right because some deity says it is, then that means morality is based only on his whim. And that means if he decides to say it's okay to rape people at random, suddenly it would be okay. And of course you would disagree. We would say... Uh, Rape, raping people was wrong, period, whether God approved of it or not, which means morality is apart from a God if he existed or not, which means you don't have to have a God to be moral. And so the notion that atheists uh, are immoral, and in fact, here's another news bit, uh, atheists are only like 1% of prisoners. And so we're actually quite uh, civil in our society, so we're not exactly an immoral bunch. And uh, that's it. Any questions? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, Bruce Anthony Jr. over there. All right, folks, it's uh, 152 by my wall. Huh? You got a good job. Thank you. Is, I don't think we're going to stand on it 20 minutes tonight. Uh, we let the, the two go first next time.